How long have you had this now? What? The uh, tournament. Um, last since last January. Yeah. I thought you had it before that. That's Rob called me in January, I think. Huh. <laughs> Hello. And a lot of yeah. them were too far for me to drive. Where are you guys from? Over in New Douglas. I'm not. I'm not far from. Athena. Oh, okay. It was about 13, 14 miles from me, as best I can remember. Yeah. Out. You have 10 rods in the boat or whatever. Yep, you got it. Go, go get them. All right, later. Stop, thief! Did you decide where you're going to set up at? Um, down there somewhere. I'm not really sure where. Walk down. So did uh, just an extra one of Ken. So did you fish these tournaments and stuff before you no, took it from law? It's too hard. You know, there's too much stuff to. Uh, how how did Law come to you and ask you about? You know, I was them? I was at a hotel one night for work in Chicago, right. and Lyle called me. He said, "Hey, I've been talking to a few people, and I think uh, I'm about asking you to, you know, take over Twist a Cat." and you know maybe run it for a year and see what you think it's a lot of work and i had just bought a new pro cat ready to do some tournament fishing and then i called my wife and kind of gave her the idea and we said yes and then did it last year kind of with him kind of just helping out a little bit okay. and then we decided to finally you know take it over this year how many how many you got scheduled for this we've year? got uh eight tournaments and then a classic that'd be the so nine tournaments um all the way from down here in Sioux Passage. Um, the next one's in Lexington over by Kansas City, Missouri. And then we start working our way up to the last blue cat water on the Mississippi, which is uh, Kilcuck, Iowa, Pool 19. And then we got two above that, which is a channel cat flathead water, um, Burlington and Nauvoo. And then we work our way back down to Alton. For the so last tournament of the year, the classic. Probably, probably here's gonna be the, the uh, classic. Yep. Gonna be here. So, you know, Danny's just going to take everybody's money, though, don't you? Yeah. He's, you know, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of, I don't know how many locals are really here, you know, even today. I mean, I'm I, I've seen majority plates from, from Iowa Florida. and, yeah. and uh, Indiana. Indiana. Um, I got a buddy from up by west side of Chicago. There's some guys over by Kansas, um, you know, down in southern Missouri. There's, there's probably just a few within a 20 mile radius of here. I mean, a lot of people well, are within Russ, three hour drive. I think Russ DeVore is down in uh, southeast Missouri, down in Dexter, yeah. Missouri. So there's a lot of people putting in some drive, you know, but there's a lot of good fishermen. I mean, if it, if the if they're biting today, the, it's going to be crazy. So does it, does it kind of stress you out a little bit sometimes? You know, it, it does a little bit, but... Uh, after after last year, you know, I, I remember I came to the first tournament by myself, and uh, Lyle and Cindy had the scale. All I brought was a notebook to write down the weights. Right. And a year later, we've got a 16 foot cargo trailer, and you know we could, we filled it up. We had to fill the back of the truck bed. Right. So it's become I would definitely say a full time job. You got a board and everything you put up, or we got boards. We got two boards. We got a new scale. I got a uh, we got a digital screen now, locking scale. You know, no more of the jumping around so at least you got that certified yeah so we've improved a lot it's just slowly taking time we've got a lot of sponsors kind of helping us out because and it is a lot of work yeah. I mean, every day all year i'm on the phone with a town you know he'd uh if, if he was down here and he needed help he always could you know on the all-nighters I'd, I'd stay out here yeah. and and make sure nobody stole it yeah. so we had an all-nighter last year you know, it's weird because a lot of people wanted an all-nighter, and we had it, and 13 boats showed up, you know. I think so. you ought to go, uh, go from the morning to midnight is what I always thought. So, we're, yeah, we're kind of, uh, this year we're going to do two Sunday tournaments. Um, a lot of people have kind of been curious about those, and I've seen some other right. trails do well with Sunday tournaments, so we're going to do that, see how that goes. Um, we got that Jack and Jill, and 
that'll be a good tournament too. You know. Right. So if you uh, send me a list, yeah. I'll uh, post that on our website. Yeah. I can't remember if I put that there or not. But... I, yeah, I'll get a list to you. And definitely. But yeah, it's it's growing. So how old are you? I just turned 30 in October. 30 and running 30 running a tournament. Yeah. And you know, something I've noticed is, I would say, we're, me and her are probably the young, one of the youngest two here. You know, catfishing is still an, an older sport. Yeah, I'm, I'm 50. But you know, a lot of these guys are, they're, they're 40 plus years old. I mean, you just don't have that younger generation like you would expect. But I slowly see it coming. Well, you know, it's you know? like uh, when I wear jerseys. And people say, well, you didn't, you didn't catch a 100-pound fish or this and that. The reason that I've got sponsors on my jerseys is when I go do things for the kids and yeah. I go to the senior citizens, you know, center, and, you know, they see my jersey, they see who's giving back to the community. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, you know, things run a lot smoother when you got a little bit of sponsorship and they a do. few extra dollars. So. They do. It's hard to get the money. I've got some added money. From some people to help, you know, pay for the scales and stuff like that. But I mean, it's still a lot of money is out of pocket. So, you, do you have a Sea Arc one coming up, or? Uh, well, we've got we got Sea Arc sponsorship from uh, Sea Arc and Dave's Marine in Fort Madison. Um, they throw in five hundred dollars at each tournament, and we did, if you have a Sea Arc boat, you get a ticket, and we just pull a ticket at the end of the day. What if you, uh, what if you win and you you're if a Sea Arc? You win, with a sea arc boat and your name gets drawn then you get another 200 on top of that so you could, you could possibly get 700 dollars just for having a sea arc you know it it is just for sea arc and that's just something they're saying thanks you know i mean dave's marine right that guy I, I bought my boat there and people just are flooding him now i mean it's it's crazy how, he's a great guy how many how many miles do you think that you put on your your vehicle every year just oh. just in the tournaments just in these well for example this tournament it took us three hours to get down here to Earth City, where we spent okay. the night. So when you're talking six hours of just driving, just to put the tournament on. Where'd you come from? Uh, Warsaw, just north of Quincy, Illinois, right on the Mississippi. Okay. You know, and then our next tournament's even farther. It's probably three and a half, four hours from me. It's all the way across the state. Is that in, uh, in Lexington, Iowa? In Lexington, Missouri, on the, on the Missouri, oh, yeah. over by Kansas City. And then the rest of them, are, some of them are closer, you know. Uh, and Lyle said one of them over in Iowa or something used to, Usually yeah. does pretty good. Yeah, I just I see the tournaments. I'm a little surprised that we didn't get 50 boats, but we still pulled 36 boats, I think. And I mean, for 36 boats for just a trail, so in March is pretty good. We, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of things are or a lot of people are burying the hatchet with other people as far as sponsorship and and stuff like that. Do you see a uh, uh, larger cooperation cooperation than you normally seen when you know, I do when everything's getting you know kinda... I, I started catfishing for bigger fish four years ago when a buddy took me out and in four years I mean I went from having a pleasure boat to now a sea arc and I fish tournaments and I I just in the, just from running this tournament trail last year and from kind of meeting people and then I fish all I fish monsters I fish the sea arc tournament I'm gonna fish river monsters. I travel as much as I can with also putting on nine tournaments. You know, but I, I see the younger generation coming up and I see also, in my opinion, I think we're at the point, and some people disagree, that you're gonna, I, I think in five years, you're gonna see Ford, Chevy, GM, that kind of sponsorship slowly coming this way. You're starting to get, you know, uh, like hook apparel, um, you're not starting you're not just getting like the catfish industry stuff you know some of these other people are kind of jumping in you know you always have sea arc um you got the, the catfish and stuff but when you start getting you know i, I got uh, a, a chevy dealer in quincy they gave me some money to help pay for scales i got uh king uh ron king he fishes the trail uh his family runs a business they gave us some money to help run the trail i guess really i guess what i was trying to get at maybe i didn't didn't say it well enough but I kind of get that way every once in a while but um, you know you get uh, A rod holders talking about B rod holders being better and, and then you end up with you know, a lot of mud slinging and, and a lot of that has has uh, stopped and 
and decided to, to do it for the betterment of catfish and tournaments. And I, and I and, think, again, that kind of goes along as it's getting bigger so fast that people can't keep up. So there's now, I mean, you take anchors. Right. I like Cat River Anchors. They're a great sponsor. Um, they're up in my area. But now you've got Never Snag Anchors down and around in Kentucky. I mean, you've got all these anchor companies that are coming out. You know, I don't, they're probably, you know, there's maybe some little tension between them, but all in all, people are buying anchors because more and more people are fishing. You know, if you go buy a Sea Arc boat right now, you're not gonna just go buy one this weekend and bring it home. You're gonna have to order it, and it's gonna probably be six months before you get it. You know, I mean, to, yeah. think of it, to think of going to buy a boat, and it's gonna be six months before you can get it, is crazy. Yeah, they, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about other people and stuff, and that, I just don't have any place in tournament fishing. No, and I and I really don't tolerate that. You know? And I, I see a lot of that stopping. I think it's getting better, especially like you know the rod companies. Oh, we use this rod, we use this rod. I think your rods suck. You, I think yeah. some of that goes along with the sponsorship. I think the guys that you know, let's say for me, you know, I don't I don't personally have a sponsorship. Everything I do is for this trail. But you know, if I had my own sponsorship, let's say with you know a certain rod uh, I'm not I guess some people might talk bad about other rods to sell that rod you know I'm not gonna you know, if I I'm only I'm not gonna if somebody comes to me and they say hey I've got this rod I'll give you six rods if you fish with them and push them I'm not the type that says well okay I want six rods that's awesome so I'm gonna take your six rods even though I don't like them and I'm really gonna probably fish with something different Turn around and sell. Turn around and then try to and, and badmouth other people. So if some if if you see a sponsorship with me or on my boat or on my trailer, it's because I believe in them and they've they've went out of their way for me and I believe their product. But I, I'm not going to badmouth, never snag or any of these. Other, you know, right, I just, just don't do no that. Place just, for it. You know, there's there's no place for that, and that's what's slowing. And I, and I see that down. I see that starting to to catch hold now. And um, you know, we we had some problems with some people before, and now. Everything smoothed over and and uh, just decided to let bygones be bygones. And I think I, a yeah, lot of that I agree. Too. And you know, it's especially I saw that at the catfish conference. You had a lot of rod companies, a lot of uh, you know different companies. I didn't really see any tension um, because, believe it or not, I, I think it's growing fast enough where they can there can be ten Ross, ten uh, you know custom builders. Um, I just personally, granted, I'm new into this, so in my eyes, what I see. And being new to this, I, I I see it growing just steady. I mean, if you're having a trip, there's no added money at this tournament. It's an 80% payback tournament, and people are driving across states. I mean, right. you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's unreal. I mean, if I had five thousand dollars added money, there could be a hundred boats here. So I'm slowly working towards that. But for it to get to that point, you've got to stop some of the, you know, the bad talking. But I, I do see it getting better. You, you know, know I think now that there's so many people that are sponsored. It's not just anybody can just call and say, hey, I want to get sponsored by you. I'll help sell your rods. I think now that there's some good enough guys that people are, you know what I mean, not just anybody can go to some rod company and say, hey, I want your rods, even though I don't really want them. You know, everybody is, is getting better, and they're really supporting each other, you know. And it's funny because here today, I mean, it's I got to push everybody to get their boats in because all they want to do is chat with each other, which is fine, you know. At 35 boats for the first for the first one of the seasons. Yeah, I mean I, I'm pretty happy. I mean about it. 35 boats, 36 boats. That yeah. was that's yeah. a good count. That's a very good count. And I've got I've got some added money this year in Canton. We've got 2,500 dollars added money. The Jack and Jill. I'm looking to have some good money in Quincy, Warsaw. A thousand dollars added money in Nauvoo. Um, they're just it's slowly growing, and uh, I enjoy it. It's a lot of work, especially with having a new kid. But uh, hopefully I can bring him up, and he likes to do it instead of being on the video games all day, you know. But uh, we'll see. You know, I just kind of take it day by day. And sometimes it's frustrating because, you know, I want to go to a town really bad because I like their ramp, I like their people. It's, you know, it's a good setup. And I just can't get in that town. You know, they don't twist a cat outdoors, a catfishing tournament. They don't want no catfishing tournament. That's, that's nasty. Don't bring that here, you know. But it's changing. You know, now with social media, Right. Um, you're getting sponsors. It, it's growing. You know, I'm 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 sponsoring ads on Facebook. It's getting out there. I mean, I'm before this all week long. I was getting calls from people I don't even know saying, "Hey, I see your tournament. I, I want to fish it. How do I do it?" Well, I'll post you know? it anytime you yeah. send it to me. But so it's uh it's definitely grown. It's fun. Um, we enjoy it. 
I'm excited for the weigh-in today because it's so different. Last year, I had a notebook and a scale, and I penciled them in. I mean, this year right. we're gonna have the trader in the background, big scoreboards, you know, LED screen. Um, so it's fun. I'm excited okay. to see. Let me add, uh, ask one more question, and and uh, I usually do this with with everyone I do. Um, do you practice CPR, Absolutely. and why do you practice CPR? You know, I practice CPR because I guess one of the guys that took me out fishing, it had been four, four or five years ago, we went out on my pontoon, his little party barge I bought after high school, and he said, hey, I'll bring the rods. He showed me a fish that he caught at work. It was like a 40-pound blue. I thought, man, I've never seen a fish like that. So, and I live right on the water. I mean, I opened my door, 15 yards is the Mississippi River flowing by. Right. So that next weekend, we went out on my pontoon, didn't have no rod holders, he just brought his rods, we caught some bait really easy. We went fishing, and it was unreal. I mean, we had a, I had a set a camera up once, and at one time, we had four rods going down. We had a 50 and 20s all day long, you know, and I thought, this is awesome, I love it. You know, and he kind of comes from a commercial family, and kind of where I live and grown up in Warsaw, right on the river, you know, a lot of, I've got a lot of friends that commercial fish, and they, they've been brought up that way. So for me to say, hey, I don't like to keep a 100 pound fish. I, I, I do and I talk to him about it, but I, I will never change that. I think it'll slowly change and it has, but I'll never change it. But I personally see when I started, when, when I first met my wife, we went out and we would catch 10 blues easy. I guarantee it every time it went out. For us to go out the same time of year this year, if we caught two blues, I'd say we're probably doing something. Now you can get on 10 again, but nothing like it used to be because the commercial fishing is just, it's skyrocketed. I mean, everybody's doing it. There's no limits. They're taking everything, you know, but I understand there's no laws. So why won't right. they? You're not going to stop it. So after I've seen what in my eyes, it, you know, decline, I do CPR, you know, and there's one time I remember my first big fish, probably a 30 pound blue. I caught in that pontoon and right across from my house and I caught it and man I, I was so stoked I mean I thought I didn't have a camera I thought nobody's ever gonna believe me you know I put that fish on the on the floor and I drove it right across the river and I don't know if my mom came out or my wife but I had him take a picture and uh, I don't know if it lived I put it back in the water I, I kind of you know moving around and he swam away but knowing what I know now I would never do that again but nobody taught me nobody said hey you know you get that fish in and these go in some water you can't throw it on the floor driving around but I was new nobody taught me now it's getting taught more and more everybody's practicing it so I, I you got a little better than I did I got jumped <laughs> they, they didn't like the the uh, catch photo and refrigerate comment so oh yeah, oh, yeah they went ape on me but you know, it was done and fun, and yeah, they, they don't have a sense of humor about that stuff. So. No, and it's, you know, I guess it's frustrating for me. I, you know, and I, I have a lot of stories, and I was the same way. I, I would never believe some of these people. They say, hey, you know, I was out last weekend, and I got spooled. And I'm like, you got a $200 reel, and you're getting spooled. That doesn't even make sense. They say, oh, I got a hook bent before. When you start having that stuff happen to you, it's like, wow, I'm hooked now. I, I had a spool get real or a, a reel get spooled. You know, it could have been what, what you know, we never know what it was. It was in current, but it was just still that fact. And uh, last year, I had a hook get bent. A dot hook, I don't know the brand. It, it could have been, you know, Team Catfish or, or Gamagatsu, but it got bent nonetheless. 10:30 at night, I fell asleep on my boat. And I wake up to that rod just getting banged. And my buddy jumps up, grabs that rod, and he sets it. I mean, that rod is bent. And then all of a sudden, it just let, let loose. The fight was gone, and we got that up. And that hook, was it wasn't bent bad. I mean, it was bent, I'd say probably a quarter inch. I mean, it was bent. And, uh, man, I was so mad. And I thought, I'm never, you know, I, I, I don't like this. If it was bought in China, whatever. But I, I was so mad at that hook that I threw that hook in the water. Oh man, I was mad. And then I realized, why did I just throw that hook in the water? I mean, that's a memory that I can't really even tell people now. Right. And uh, literally one week later, I heard that a 103 pound blue was caught in a net and killed in my pool. So yeah. it's always like, was that that 103 pounder? You know, you just never know. But it's just kind of cool to know that back in my head, I think, well, 
that could have been a fish that I right. almost caught. And then, you know, there, and that's another thing is, you know, a lot of people don't, I can get these St. Louis guys to come up, they're like, oh, there's no fish up there. You know, Lyle, in the, in the second to last pool, you can catch a blue in. I mean, Lyle caught a 50 pound blue. There were more blues caught up north than there were down here last year. I mean, it was unreal. All right. I mean, when the fishing's on up there, it's on. You know, but uh, so my CPR is definitely the best I can do. And we, I've got oxygen here, so we do the best we can to get all the fish back in the water. You know, um, but sometimes it's tough. I mean, sometimes when it's hot, you just can't do it. You know. Right. So. All right. With that being said, appreciate it and uh, taking the time to yeah, talk to us. Absolutely. And I'll get this posted on the website later on. All righty. So. Remember, if you ain't fishing, you ain't living. That's true.